This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about products of Dirichlet series. So to start off with, uh, first recall um, about products of power series. So, so suppose I've got a power series A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared and so on, and I multiply it by another power series B0 plus B1x and so on. Then I get the power series C0 plus C1x and so on, where the numbers Ci are given as follows. So C0 is just A0, B0. C1 is A1, B0 plus A0, B1. C2 is A2, B0 plus A1, B1 plus A0, B2, and so on. And in general, Cn is just the sum over all um, i of Ai times Bn minus i. Um, this expression here is sometimes called a convolution of um, the series A and B. Um, in the theory of Fourier integrals, you, you get a rather similar convolution, where if you take two functions f and g, the, the convolution is the integral of f of um, y minus x times g of x dx. And you can see this is rather similar to this expression here, except you've replaced uh, integration over the reals by summation over the integers, or, or maybe the positive integers. Um, so taking a product of power series corresponds to taking a convolution of the corresponding arithmetic functions. So what happens for Dirichlet series? So let's take a Dirichlet series f of s, which is f1 over 1 to the s plus f2 over 2 to the s, and so on. And g of s is going to be g1 over 1 to the s plus g2 over 2 to the s. And let's just multiply them together. So f of s times g of s. Well, the first coefficient is just going to be f1 times g1 over 1 to the s. And the next one is f1 times g2 plus f2 g1 over 2 to the s. So, so far it's rather similar to power series. The next coefficient is f1 g3 plus f3 g1 over 3 to the s. And now you notice there's no, nothing like f2 g2 in the numerator that we might expect by analogy with power series. And the next one is um, f1 g4 plus f2 g2 plus f4 g1 over 4 to the s. And now you notice that what's going on is the pairs of subscripts 1, 4, 2, 2, Four, one are all ways of writing 4 as a product of two numbers. In other words, this is really a sum over divisors of 4. So, so f of s times g of s is a sum over all n of 1 over n to the s times the coefficient, which is a sum over all divisors of n, of f of d times g of n over d. And now this little bit here, the sum over d divides n of f of dg n over d is really a sort of multiplicative um, convolution. You see, it's um, rather like the additive convolution we had earlier, except instead of adding, instead of summing over all pairs of integers that sum up to n, we're summing over all pairs of integers whose product is n. So Dirichlet series, um, products of Dirichlet series, correspond to taking a sort of multiplicative convolution of two arithmetic functions. So let's look at an example of this. Suppose we take f of s to be just the usual Riemann zeta function. So that's 1 over 1 to the s plus 1 over 2 to the s and so on. So the numbers, the function f of n is just given by f of n equals 1 for all n. And let's take g of s to be g of 1 over 1 to the s plus g of 2 over 2 to the s and, and so on, and work out what zeta of s times g of s looks like. Well, if we write its coefficients as um, h of n over n to the s, then we see that h of n is just equal to sum over d divides n of g of d times the function 1 taking an argument n over d, which is just 1. So um, this is just sum over d divides n of g of d. Um, we can see an example of this if we take g of n to be, say, Euler's function phi of n, the, the, the number of 
numbers less than n that are co-prime to n. Then we recall we had the identity, um, the sum over d divides n of 5d was just equal to n. And you remember we used this identity in proving that numbers had primitive roots by carefully counting numbers of elements of various orders. So um, um, if we take um, um, f of s, so, so g of s to be the function pi of 1 over 1 to the s plus phi of 2 over 2 to the s and so on, then zeta of s times g of s is equal to 1 over 1 to the s plus 2 over 2 to the s plus 3 over 3 to the s and so on, where the numerators 1, 2, 3 are just the values of this function um, f of n is n up here. Um, and from this, well, um, so this series here is just zeta of s minus 1, as we saw earlier. So um, um, from this, we can work out what g of s is. g of s is just equal to zeta of s minus 1 divided by zeta of s. So that's the function whose coefficients are Euler's phi function. So we found that in the previous lecture, different method using Euler products, but... Um, here we've found it by taking products of Dirichlet series. Um, we can also get something called the Mobius inversion formula. So the Mobius inversion formula says this. If g of s is equal to zeta of s times f of s, then obviously f of s is equal to zeta of s minus 1 times g of s. And if you write it like this, it looks completely and utterly trivial. Um, if we write it in terms of the coefficients of the functions f and g, it looks rather more subtle. So the first equation says that g of n is equal to sum of d divides n of f of d. And the second equation says that f of n is equal to the sum of d divides n of g of d times the Mobius function of n over d. So the Mobius function comes because it's the Fourier coefficients of zeta of s. So zeta of s minus 1 is just sum of mu n over n to the s. So this pair of equations is called the Möbius um, inversion formula. Uh, yeah, it's the same guy who invented the Möbius band with a twist in it, but he, he also did other things. So uh, an example of this, suppose we, we recall that n is the sum of d divides n phi of n. So in this we're taking g of n to be n and f of n to be phi of n. So we can apply the Mobius inversion formula to this and we find that phi of n is equal to sum of d divides n of d times mu of n over d. So for instance, this is that phi of 6 is equal to um, 6 minus 3 minus 2 plus 1. Um, so um, another example of a product of Dirichlet series, we can take zeta of s times L of s, where L of s was the series 1 over 1 to the s minus 1 over 3 to the s plus 1 over 5 to the s minus 1 over 7 to the s and so on. And this series turns out to be equal to a quarter of sum uh, uh, of um, sum over n of r of n over n to the s, where r of n is the number of solutions to n equals a squared plus b squared. So you remember we discussed the number of solutions to this before, and we found that r of n was actually multiplicative and depended on the prime factorization of n and whether the prime factors were 1 or 3 modulo 4. In particular, we see that the series r1 over 1 to the s plus rp over p to the s plus r of p squared over p to the 2s and so on, um, uh, depends, the sum of this depends on the value of p. So for p equals 2, um, it's 1 over 1 minus 2 to the s because these numbers, are, the, the numerators are all 1. For p1 mod 4, um, we get it's 1 over 1 minus p to the minus s squared, as you recall from a few lectures ago. But for p3 mod 4, um, 
the number of representations of p to the n is zero unless n is even so we just get this factor of one over one minus p to the minus two s and we can write this as one over one minus p to the minus s times one over one plus p to the minus s and now um if you compare all these Euler factors with the Euler factors of zeta of s, so the Euler factor of zeta of s was um, 1 over 1 minus p to the minus s, and the Euler factor of L of s was 1 over 1 minus chi of p times p to the minus s, you see that zeta of s times L of s has exactly the same Euler factors as a quarter of sum of Rn over n to the s. Should put a quarter there, I guess. Um, um, so um, this expression here is, is, is actually something called the um, zeta function of the Gaussian integers. So um, the usual Riemann zeta function is just the zeta function of the ordinary integers. And there are analogues of this for various other rings. And the, about the simplest example is the ring of Gaussian integers, whose zeta function, in fact, turns out to be this. Um, you can sort of understand the connection because the coefficients of zeta of s, or uh, 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 the coefficient of 1 over n to the s of zeta of s is up to a factor of 2, the number of ordinary integers of absolute value n. And here, the, the, the coefficient of 1 over n to the s is the number of Gaussian integers such that the square of their absolute value is n, again up to a factor of 4 or so. So the zeta function you can think of as being something like counting the number of Gaussian integers of, of given norm. Um, another thing we can do with Dirichlet series is differentiate them. So suppose I've got a Dirichlet series, um, f of s, which is um, f of 1 over 1 to the s plus f of 2 over 2 to the s and so on. And what happens if I differentiate it with respect to s? Um, well, what I get, um, well, the derivative of n to the minus s is um, minus log n times n to the minus s. So I essentially multiply all the coefficients by log of n. If I put a minus sign in front there, I get log of 1 times f of 1 over 1 to the s plus log of 2 times f of 2 over 2 to the s and so on. Uh, log of 1 is 0, of course. I'm just putting it in so that you can see what the pattern is. Um, so an example of this is the um, um, function lambda n, um, which is equal to log of, k, log of p if n is equal to p to the k and zero otherwise. So you remember last time that sum of lambda n um, times n to the minus s was just the derivative with respect to s of um, log of zeta of s. So here we've got an example of taking the derivative of a Dirichlet series. Um, as an example of all this, we can prove an identity due to Selberg. So this is one version of Selberg's identity. Um, so Selberg's identity was a rather remarkable identity found by Selberg that he used to give an elementary proof of the prime number theorem. And his identity isn't e that, that he proved the prime number theorem isn't exactly the following identity, but is a uh, uh, rather closely related to it. So, so his identity says that lambda n times log of n plus sum over d divides n of lambda d times lambda n over d is equal to sum over d divides n of mu of d times log of n over d um, all squared. And um, if you were asked to prove this identity, it would you know, it would look like a complete nightmare. I mean, this looks like this just completely bizarre, complicated identity, and you've no idea how, how you should even approach it. Well, if you approach it using generating functions for Dirichlet series, it becomes essentially trivial to prove. So all we do is we find the, um, we find the functions whose coefficients are given by each of these um, 
functions here. So, so for lambda n, um, you remember these are the coefficients of um, th th this corresponds to the Dirichlet series zeta prime of s divided by zeta of s. And you remember if we multiply the coefficients by log of n, this corresponds to differentiating the function. So we get zeta prime of s over zeta of s um, differentiated, uh, possibly with a minus sign in there. I always get muddled up about the minus signs. And here, um, the, the expression we've got is summing over d divides n of, of some function of d times some function of n over d. So this corresponds to the Dirichlet series whose um, coefficients are lambda of d. And you remember this is just zeta of prime of s over zeta of s times the function whose coefficients are lambda d again. So we just take zeta prime of s over zeta of s again. Um, now here, um, the function um, log of n squared, so this bit here would just correspond to the function where we take the second derivative of zeta of s. Um, now this whole thing here where we sum over mu of d times log of n squared, you remember when we, when we sum over d divides n of mu of d times something, this corresponds to multiplying by 1 over zeta of s. So, so this um, term on the right corresponds to the Dirichlet series zeta double prime of s over zeta of s. Um, and now all we've got is the identity zeta prime of s over zeta of s differentiated is equal to zeta prime of s squared over zeta of s squared times zeta double prime of plus zeta double prime of s over zeta of s. And this is essentially just Leibniz's rule for differentiating, so it should be a plus there, for differentiating um, for differentiating a quotient of two functions. So this um, completely horrendous looking identity between arithmetical functions um, just turns out to be an elementary piece of, you know, um, calculus where you're just differentiating a product or quotient of functions. Okay, so next um, lecture I'll be talking a little bit about the prime number theorem and not giving a complete proof of it but because that's rather too complicated but sketching the main ideas of a proof of it.